He wasn't supposed to see me. Social services has made sure of it. The tweeting his schizophrenia is a crime, whilst actual criminals are free to fail, neglect, and oftentimes abuse their children. Yet he made his feelings known. He fought and petitioned for the right to have contact, not just for me, but for my older sister Ellen, my mother had long before I was a twinkle in his eye. I have lived in two other countries, and in neither of those countries did the state exercise draconian legal jurisdiction without offering the right of recompense in the court of law. I am thereby petitioning for the right to be a father of my two children. He wasn't allowed in the hospital. My mother was rushed to hospital for another emergency C-section, much like my sister eight years prior, panting, crying and screaming for the matrimonial embrace of her husband. Her wish was fulfilled with the assistance of my granddad, Bill, who was able to sneak him into the hospital. He held me and my eyes opened I saw his auburn curls and his wide smile and cried with joy as if I somehow knew this would have been the, one of the only times he would ever hold me. On this day, he named me Benjamin after his Scottish best friend he met whilst living in Carlisle. I felt the gentle, dulcet tones of his voice resonate in my ears, gentler and much more eloquent than what I'd hear growing up in East Manchester. I saw him once more the day in which I was christened as Ushiku, meaning gift from God, in Swahili, and inducted into the church of the same state that had so ignorantly maligned him. On that day, I was robed in white as babies often are, my golden curls matching his auburn ones. I was the very picture of a cherub. He watched as the reverend gently dripped my head in the water before passing me into his hands, and then he proclaimed a baptismal name to be Ushiku meaning gift from God in Swahili. As he did so, I felt my name captured the moment perfectly. It captured the grace of a father being able to hold his son for the very last time. It encapsulated the beauty of paying homage to where one came from, the vast heartland of Tanzania. It even prophesied our final meeting. 16 years later, I was invited to my grandma's 65th birthday, less than a year after meeting my mother for the first time. I returned like the prodigal son, though the sins were not my own, but instead laws of the state. As I lay awake, my grandparents bearing my room. Oh, thank you, notification, getting rid of my poem. Um, <laughs> as I lay awake in my grandparents' spare room, I cried from tears that were not my own and felt his presence with me, as if he knew what was to come. A year later, I was homeless and my grandmother had passed away from cancer. The day before my funeral, my cousin presented me with my dad's petition, and then the memories flooded back. Back from the dead, I put rotten words fester inside my severed head. Seven heads, just mean more for the slaughter. She was my wife and a good man's daughter. You took her oral virginity, desecrating the temple of personal integrity. Let's began this enmity. Cats have nine lives, I kill you nine times. You're a little pussy whilst I'm trained with knives. They check my vital signs, but a pleb has never been important. You impertinent, I take pleasure in hurting cunts. You may see me as the runt, but now this big dog's grown up with ghastly teeth. Smashing cows to the inner ground beef. Your blood may be blue, but your soul is black. Your belly is yellow as a launch mat attack. You're gross, engrossing cowardice. So I wrote this cowardice. Your pants are soaked in a coward's piss. Anonymous asylum is what you'll see me as. But when you're bound, gagged and tortured, what will you be seeing, lad? Though lad implies that you have manhood. You start your coke down a throat, but you still ain't a man, bruv. I'll eat you for breakfast, and I will shit you for supper. What do I want? <laughs> I just want you to suffer. And in honour of that, I have a nice little nurse rhyme for you all. <laughs> I know a twat called David Cameron, he gave Pepper Pig a hammering, took the apple and stuck his yammering, poor old David Cameron. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs>